Hey everybody, what's going on? We got a lot of Guns N' Roses news today, and it's sort of like a mishmash of different news. There's some rare Axl Rose photos we haven't seen before. There's some stuff about Matt Sorum talking about his first marriage, and then there's also some news about a funny Guns N' Roses story consider, uh, concerning uh, comedian Jim Jeffries. But let's get started with a tweet that comedian Andrew Dice Clay did. This is actually from about a day ago. It's a picture of him with Axl Rose, and judging by what Axl's wearing, this was probably taken in the late 80s. As you guys know, uh, when Metallica and Guns were touring together, one show that they played was at the Rose Bowl, and Dice actually opened uh, for Metallica and Guns N' Roses back then. And I think they've been in touch or been friends since. And I, th I think, if I'm not mistaken, Dice might have been at the Troubadour show as well. And uh, Dice was actually one of the few people who claimed credit for helping reunite the band. I wasn't just Dice. It was also uh, Steven Tyler. I think Fred Durst claimed he also had a hand in reuniting the band. So there's a whole article on Rolling Stone where Dice talks about the show at the Troubadour and how he sort of nudged the members to get them to reunite so i've linked to that article down below for you guys to check out and just uh, to remind you guys when there was all these stories about steven and T uh, tyler helping reunite the band dice and fred durst basically guns and roses put out a tweet saying they want to thank everybody who claimed credit for the reunion even to the people who they haven't spoken to in numerous years while we're on the topic of comedians, I want to let you guys know about an interesting story on YouTube. So this is from comedian Jim Jeffries, who I really hadn't heard of until I actually watched the video. So I've linked to it down below. But just to summarize, he opened for Guns N' Roses, I think, in Vegas a number of years ago before the reunion. And he uh, basically was told that he had to be off stage by a certain time because that's when the band was going to show up. He had a hard time believing it because Guns N' Roses were notoriously tardy. They would never show up on time, keeping audiences waiting for hours and hours. And he made some joke in his set about Axel being late. And after the actual stand-up show, he ran into some athlete, which he didn't name. He said the, said the, said the, athlete, the athlete had took some shrooms. He was then invited to the Guns N' Roses after party on the roof of the Hard Rock Hotel where Axel actually got a chance to talk to Jim Jeffries. So some guy came over to Jim Jeffries and said, Axel would like to speak with you. So he was speaking to Axel while he was high on shrooms. And then Axel kind of turned to him and was kind of offended by the joke about Axel being late. Basically, Axel told Jim Jeffries, you know, the stories of me showing up late have been blown way out of proportion. But then the guy who was interviewing Jim Jeffries uh, basically said he went to a Guns N' Roses show back, I think in the Use Your Illusion days, and Axel surely showed up two hours late to the concert. At the end of the day, Jim said, didn't really have anything negative to say about Axel. He did say he did get a photo with Axel, which he claims something that Axel doesn't really like to do, and nobody else at the party got a photo with him. So we also have a new photo of Axel Rose that's emerged from, some people are claiming it's the wilderness years, where he was sort of out of the public spotlight. Uh, the wilderness years I would define as anything from July of 1993 to pretty much the year 2000. Now it's not clear as to when this photo was taken, but if you look, he's wearing the Charles Manson shirt. He's also wearing the jacket, the brown jacket he wore at the 1994 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony in January of that year where he inducted Elton John. And uh, the guy next to him, some people are saying is Paul Tobias, who is the Yoko Ono of Guns N' Roses. And uh, at least that's what some people claim. I would say this photo is probably from 1993, probably sometime after February, and it could be from February to, you know, January of 1994, but it's a photo I've never seen before. It comes from a bandmate of Paul Tobias, and somebody was nice enough on the forums to actually post the picture. And then we've got some news about Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. He has got a new memoir coming out called Lonely Boy, so it's due out later this month. And somebody on the MyGNR forums was nice enough to actually post about uh, a preview they read on Google Books. Now, as you, as you guys know, Steve Jones has a little bit of a connection to Guns N' Roses. Axl Rose actually sang on a song with him called I Did You No Wrong. I've linked to it down below if you guys want to go hear it. And he was also in a super group with Duff McKagan and Matt Sorum uh, called the Neurotic Outsiders from 1996, which is a terrific band you guys should go check out. John Taylor from Duran Duran is also in the band. So regarding Axel, at least from the previews that this guy read, uh, there's been a little bit of a description, but it's really short and it's pretty sugar-coated. So basically, uh, Steve gave some interview at the time, or a few years after he sang with Axel on that track, making fun of Axel and sort of claiming that he invited Axel Rose to sing on his record because GNR was on top of the world at, at that time and he knew Axel would help boost sales of his album. And he also talked a bit about Neurotic Outsiders. 
He says he said that at the time that the band had started that nobody could give 100% attention to Neurotic Outsiders because he was involved with the Sex Pistols reunion at that time. And then, as you guys know, there was talk of Guns N' Roses getting back together in late 1996, and Duff had to rehearse, as he refers to. Now, there may be more references to Neurotic Outsiders and Axl Rose, but that's all that he was able to pull from the Google Books preview. So let's go into our next piece of news. So somebody on the MyGNR forums had asked a question about Matt Storm's first wife. So as you guys know, Matt Storm's married to Ace Harper. That's his second marriage. He was married uh, back in 1993 towards the tail end of the User Illusion Tour. If you guys ever watched the estranged video, this is his wife, Kai, or Koi Sorum, she was called. And uh, somebody had asked about her because there really isn't much information about it on the internet. But uh, somebody did some digging on the MyGNR forums and they actually heard an interview that Matt Sorum did in 2004. He was probably promoting contraband with Velvet Revolver and Matt Sorum was on Love Line with Dr. Drew. And he talked a little bit about his first marriage. So basically to summarize, uh, Matt Storm indicated he was married for about a year or so from 1993 to 1994. And he said it was his first marriage. He basically wanted to keep up with his bandmates who were getting married around that time too. So as you guys know, Duff and Slash got married in around September, October of 1992. Gilby Clark was already married. Um, Axel wasn't married. Uh, Dizzy Reed was supposedly married around that time too. So he saw everybody else get married. He decided he should too. And of course, that's never a good reason to get married unless you're really into and then he also said that his marriage fell apart largely because of drugs, alcohol, and he said those things don't mix with marriage. He also said he fooled around a lot. He would tell her he'd be going to his wife, he'd go be going to the studio, but then he'd be out partying and stuff. And then he said he didn't even have a bachelor party for his wedding. Now, if you guys read Slash's book, um, uh, when he got married to his first wife, he had a co-ed bachelor party. His wife told him that he wasn't allowed to have a bachelor party uh, because his entire life was one bachelor party. So that should have been a trouble sign from the beginning. And then uh, our another piece of news for today, guys, is there's a really great podcast if you guys haven't heard of it. It's called Appetite for Distortion. It's got about 13 episodes or so so far, and it's just basically two Guns N' Roses fans talking about Guns N' Roses, which is what more could you ask for? And they have a new episode up, which I've linked to down below, uh, where they're debating which song is better, November Rain or Estranged. And uh, that's definitely a good debate. I would say I'd have to go with Estranged, at least on this day. You know, you ask me any given day, my answer may change may be different but uh, I think today I'm feeling estranged. So we've also got another cool video clip. This I want to thank to one of my subscribers who notified me of it. I also saw them on my GNR forums. So if you guys ever saw Guns N' Roses performance at Rock in Rio uh, 2 back in 1991, uh, they did a really cool transition between Double Talk and Jive and Welcome in the Jungle. So they played Double Talk and Jive and then they transitioned from that song into Welcome in the Jungle. So I've linked to it down below at this certain timestamp where you guys can go see it. And what's interesting about this version of Double Talk and Jive, which I wish I would have known about in my True Story video I did, is that Axel kind of freestyles some parts of Double Talk and Jive, so he has more lyrics in it than he normally would, but it's a lot of freestyle and vocals, which is really cool as well. So I've linked to that down below. Go check it out. We've got one last news story of the day, and then we're going to wrap it up. So there's also another post on the MyGNR forums, and it concerns all the appearances that Slash has made on TV shows, more specifically like comedy shows and or movies so there's actually a couple uh, that you guys may recognize right away so he was on tales from the crypt which was like a popular show back in the day i don't think it's on tv anymore there was also a movie called the underground comedy movie there was also the drew carey show he was on back in 1998 he was also on charlie sheen's show because him and charlie sheen are pretty good friends uh anger management and a few other ones too so i've linked to that post and you guys can watch some of the clips maybe you guys haven't seen them before that does it for today's Guns N' Roses news. Thanks for watching, guys. Also, I'll let you guys know I'm on Twitter. You guys can follow me at Guns N' Roses Daily. Um, if you guys follow me, I'll follow you back. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe for the latest Guns N' Roses news. Take care.